Yep. Good morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Syracuse Landmark Preservation Board. Today is August 15th, 2019. And for everybody's information and the mayor's move to be as transparent and open as we can, uh, these recordings are both on camera and on audio. Present at today's meeting are Dan Leary, Tom Cantwell, Don Radke, Jeff Romano, Lisa Tonzi, and Kate Alwitter. And excused absences are uh, Cynthia Carter, Julian Marshall, Bob Haley, and we're with Joe May. Still. Okay. Okay, I'd like a motion to accept the minutes from last meeting. So moved. Do I have a second? Aye. Second, Lisa? Yes. Any changes, modifications? Hearing none, seeing none, all in favor of accepting the minutes as submitted? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Old business. There is none. New business. The Certificate of Appropriateness Application, CA-1915, 1303 James Street. Is that applicant here? The applicant is not is out of town, but okay. had asked that the board review the Okay. Could you go through it for the board? Sorry? Could you go through it? So the <coughs> is seeking to install a fence um, or short, short, actually a gate with two um, sections of fence at their front walk. Um, they're having difficulty with uh, people walking through. They just purchased the house mm -hmm. and um, so I think that the house has been unattended for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, they, they are planning on cutting those hedges down to a four foot height. Uh, but they, but people are in the habit of walking from James to Sedgwick um, through their property. And uh, they have designed a, uh, they've gone to Raleigh and have designed this fence. Um, it's four foot high, a fence and gate. Um, and uh, as you'll see in the, in, in the application. Um, this usually within the, the Sedgwick Farms neighborhood, the board has recommended not you know not putting fences in the in the front yard. Um, this, however, is on James Street, which is a different character, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to to make that make that point. Is the fence going behind the bushes? The fence will actually. They're going to have to figure out exactly where to, to place. The, I, I think they were planning on putting them in line so that it would be. There would be the, the bushes plus, it's just a short short pieces of fence. It's not the full, it's just to connect to the, basically to the bushes. hedge. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so it's just, uh, it's it's so they're just but, infilling. Yeah, infilling. Okay. It, there's a gate and then, you know, two, 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 panels. Foot, two, two panels of fence to either side uh, as a deterrent uh, to people walking through. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have any discussion? Tom? Um, I, I personally don't have the same feeling about gates or even a fence across the front of a property. However, this sounds like a permanent solution to what is a temporary problem because the house was unoccupied. Hmm. Any other comments? Dan? I guess I don't have any real problem. I, I understand the position we're usually in. I agree with Tom, it is kind of a permanent solution. And a rather nice one, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. I don't have a real problem. <clears throat> well, I'm looking for a motion one way or the other. I'd like to make a motion to accept. You have a motion to accept. Do I have a second? I second. You second motion to accept? Okay. Yes. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Zoning referrals. PR-1914-246-248 East Water. Never seen you before. Yeah, I know. Uh, Never been here. Please give us your name and address Good for the morning. record. Yeah, Jim Niddle and Architects 239 East Water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning. Okay. So when we were here last, <clears throat> uh, I think your comments and concerns were mostly about volume and uh, uh, <coughs> openings demonstration uh, that while we're changing the look of these buildings based on the current conditions that we maintain something uh, appropriate to the neighborhood. Um, 
one thing I did send to Kate. I have a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just point out, and we talked about on the Falker building, about uh, that second floor fan the windows and uh, mm -hmm. uh, being, maybe it would be more appropriate with four separate windows, but we did find historic photos that um, oh, nice. there, there is a beam in there. We've discovered there is a beam in there that's entirely open. Okay, yeah. great. So what we're doing is is, is appropriate. Uh, I think um, the windows, what what you don't see, what you don't see in our renderings, perhaps, is some of the some of the seams and and, but this and uh, is the actual window. materials that will end up being here. I think that band of windows <coughs> does, does need another horizontal. So, you know, mm -hmm. I've, unfortunately, I've, I've marked up my plan a little bit here, but I think that band of windows with another horizontal helps to keep in, in keeping with what's there. Um, um, Almost creating another transom. Yeah, yeah, mm. so which is a little more it's in a little character more in with the original building. Uh, and then on the 250 side, um, while we still want to be able to open the second floor, we thought that we could create some, some opaque panels in there, so at least we keep the rhythm of the windows that are there now. Uh, these will be double hungs up above here. Um, mm -hmm. And there will be, on the steel uh, that we're applying to the front of the building, there will be some seams there that'll add to kind of the scale and the character of it all. And this top part here really kind of acts as a, as a big cornice in effect. So. So I think we've addressed hmm. your concerns, and I can share with my little doodle folks mm -hmm. And we can get this picked up and resubmit it as well. Yes, sir. I um, appreciated your remark about the four windows, you know, that, that, that the, the more typical design for the older buildings would be for the second floor windows to mimic the third floor windows. Yeah, um, but I can see from the historical photograph mm -hmm. that's not the way it was. And it looks like you have kept um, to the same window opening, but you made it all window. You made it all window. Um, so I, I sort of, I'm sorry that it, it isn't going to be the four, the four under the four, but but uh, that's not the way it was. Yeah, and again, um, I, I think that if there's no there, kind of take this down. Right. 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 I, I, I do, <clears throat> I certainly appreciate your response to the first submission. Wonderful. Can you explain these then? Those are just some panels, some color panels. Is it going to be hard to do? This is pretty much what's there. We're trying to, trying to clean it up. And that's a tenant that we're running off with. And the only thing would be make this one window. Okay, this is a zoning referral. Our jurisdiction is to comment. It, so, from the previous meeting, it was it was commented that uh, building a 250 or excuse me 248 Water Street maintained the three window um, openings on a second and third floor, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it uh, gives it its, its historical component. Yep. <clears throat> so, just to catch Don up. I was not here at that. Yeah, point. so uh, we pushed for. They, they just uh, approved it. Down. <laughs> <laughs> we we pushed for uh, the architect to look at maintaining those openings because that's what uh, gives the building its, its historical accuracy. Um, the 246, the Falker building. Um, our comment was to maintain the four as on the third floor, but given this new evidence showing that the second floor is almost a, a play off of the first floor. <coughs> Gives that a lot, a lot of credibility there. Yeah. So a lot of freedom uh, to in, reinterpret yeah, the second floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I like, the, I like the change on that, especially um, if you're showing on your, on your new rendering there, uh, creating a transom line. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Creating that transom line that yeah. that um, picks up on the historical window mm -hmm. uh, fenestration. Um, I, I like that a lot. It looks good. I don't know if those would be operable. Or if you do, well, it would still be it still be this whole. It would still it's be still a folding. folding. Okay, system. still folding. Okay. Yeah. okay, so it still folds open, right? But when closed, it reads as. But the we all know that datum in Syracuse, New York, it's going to be closed <laughs> more often. Than Any that. other comment? Okay, Tom. 
I guess my comment is I'm, I'm very pleased with the architect, architectural changes, uh, but I still, I'm not in agreement with the lights, the business about the lights. <coughs> um, maybe there's nothing we can do to say you can't do that, but my comment would be, and I hope it's included, is that to me it, it, appeal, it appears garish and inappropriate. I, I, I think it's just a very subtle backlighting. Um, can you speak to the materials on that again, Jim? Just to clarify what that from the, is. It's just it's a plate steel. Um, it's going to have a series of rivet heads and um, uh, perforations for the light to bleed through. Uh, we're going to be working with that. So this is bolted to the It'll facade? Be bolted to the facade, yeah. And, and we discussed that uh, cementitious purging is just not going to come off. You, we would destroy mm -hmm. the masonry if we if tried to take it off. So we're, we're we're covering it and doing something that's a little more interesting, a little, a little more. Is that going to be on both buildings? No, that's just, it's just 248. Yep. Yeah, so it would be removable at some point. In theory, it's not likely. <laughs> <laughs> and that light goes all the way up? Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, a low shadow line all the way around. Any other comments on the lighting? or? I have no problem. It's pretty crazy. Sufficiently. I think it'll be an interesting addition to this. This neighborhood is really Light coming is alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be, uh, yeah. This it's is going to be the reaction. new house yeah. spot. Mm -hmm. I'd say he's, they've, they've come back, they've heard us, they listened and made yeah. uh, appropriate, comment, uh, appropriate remarks to our comments. So. so am I reading the board that our comment will be in support with a little uh, disagreement on lighting, a minor <coughs> disagreement? Yeah. Does anyone else have the that? Or no? I'm, am I the only one? I don't have an issue with it. Oh, you don't have an issue. Okay. I don't know. <coughs> Lisa, if you want to make mention on it. All right. So our comments will be in support of the new redesign. Per. 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 Uh, you want, you want to re resubmit yeah, that to Kate? Yeah. Have that one, or are you going to res you will resubmit them to Or you can just send it to me. Yeah, it's going to have this one. Huh? I really appreciate the old photograph. Yeah, really. It's yeah, really, that's really nice that you could have yeah, that out. Where'd you pull that out? <laughs> Get that at OHA. You know where that is? It's in the lobby of the State Power Building. Is, is it really? Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, State I had to take Power a picture Archives. Of the picture, <laughs> it's really I'm nice. Sure, I'm sure it's down at the, at the Historical Association if we go look for it. Yep. No, great job. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Have a good day. Okay, Two. continuing on zoning referrals, PR 19 15, 242, 260 Wall Street. That apple from here? Could you please give us your name and address for the record? My name is Mike Wolniak, Wolniak Architects, 1610 James Street. I'm representing Nick Angarano. Uh, trademark construction, uh, <coughs> uh, 10 Wolf Street. Okay. You're on. Um, what the owner is proposing for a structure at 252 Wolf Street is a new mm -hmm. storefront at the first floor level only. This is a, an existing two story um, masonry building with a wood. Um, facade that has deteriorated over time and he is attempting to install new uh, wood infill um, and aluminum and glass glazing on the storefront. Because there is the potential for an apartment on the upper floor or some separate occupancy, a separate door is being included in order to be able to um, access the second floor separately from the first floor, mm -hmm. which is in recent past and distant past uh, been a um, uh, like a store of some sort, uh, grocery store I believe. The building is presently unoccupied and is intended I guess to be unoccupied in the near future. At some point he may um, choose to lease it out if he can find a tenant for it, mm -hmm. in which time he would have to submit for permit for the build out of the interior. Is that shed over the, this protrudes from the front of the building? It does. There it, is a does it currently? Yeah. It does. It was original to the building, I believe. 
Can you speak to the removal of the existing um, brick pier? And it, would that work in the in the, the proposed scope? You, you've got your door set to the left-hand side of the facade. Are you able to maintain that brick pier or no? Uh, no. The, the brick pier, for all intents and purposes, was non-structural. Okay. It okay. was just for appearance, and it was somewhat wobbly. Okay. The left, the left door is is intended to uh, there the is future to the upstairs and then correct. the middle there's, door for the downstairs. There is a stair that is along the east side of the building which would be the left door. The left door, okay. And so that would access the, um, the second floor only. And so, there would be a separating wall that would separate the ground floor creating a slight vestibule there um, to accommodate the access to that stair. So all the surface material that's not glaze and aluminum is wood? Wood. Painted. Painted. How far out does this projection, shed projection, come? I'm, I'm thinking of the outswinging doors on the sidewalk that you have space for clearance. Mm. There is no plans on this. Um, it, the original doors that were on the building were in the same plane as the proposed and they did swing out so I mean it's consistent with what was there initially how much of a projection is there is that a couple of feet or three feet for the door the door is a three no, foot no, the shed how, how much is a projectile oh, from the building it's no more than 18 inches oh, it's, okay. it's very slight is that a photo of the of the existing um, well, this is the original. Okay. Uh, the shed is within the property line. Or it would project beyond the property line into the right of way. It does project. So it has projected. It it's has just projected just since it day one. It's not the whole thing. Okay. okay. So is there an encroachment agent? There would be. I have the application to be submitted um, tomorrow. The owner is out of town. <coughs> On our comments, everything would be subject to you obtaining that encroachment. Yeah. That's correct. Those were the comments back from uh, the Office of Zoning. Right. Any other comments the on shed. the actual design? It's the shed. Look, the, shed the, the proposed storefront looks good. I like the, sim the symmetry of it. Calling that a shed. Uh, balances out the second floor. Not a shed. Tried to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I think it's effective. So I'm reading the feeling of the board. Our comment is in support, uh, subject to um, the encroachment being obtained. Uh, is this a Cornish existing? No, it's a center on the block. Uh, there is a vacant lot to the right of it. The the owner, I sent the survey. He he has amassed all the property on the block. I believe. Uh, but this has been subdivided as a single property from uh, the about a bin club there all the way to I guess it would be Park Street and along Park Street. Mm -hmm. There it is. There. Now the total the total lot is two forty two to two sixty. Uh, Wolf Street. This actual building's uh, address is 252, so it's right in the middle of it. To the right, you can see the uh, on that photograph that you're looking at. Here's a survey. Here's the, here's the lot. Any uh, discussion or plans at this point? Just on the side as to what he's going to do with the lot. Is he having any conversation about the lot or? Uh, well. On the drawing, sure. if necessary, sure, huge. Um, we have a, huge a proposed lot. parking yeah, he's lot. Taking this out. You could put a this parking lot better. in there that would accommodate the appropriate number of cars so for the building. Okay. 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 Well, that would be a separate application. Yeah. That's correct. And you might want to tell them that bringing that up to the curb might be problematic. Understood. So. But what it is, uh, yeah. we're showing it's what not is part of this application. It right. is not what we're attempting to get approved at this point is just the just, just, just the store store front. Front. Yeah. So you're not going to touch the corner at this point. We were not 
nothing above the underside of that cornice line down. It's, uh, I think it's, what, 10 feet or thereabouts? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so the representation in your drawing doesn't include anything above that shed. That's correct. Right. It's just remains existing. Because I think we'd want to see some, a little better detailing of the, of the corners and, and the edge if, of If you treatment. decide to do something there. That's correct. Okay. It's just the infill of that, that wood storefront on the, yep. on the ground floor only. Okay. All right, so subject to uh, um, obtaining the encroachment, uh, the board is in Fine. support? Yeah. Okay. So this is right across from the lawyer. Right. So hopefully right. when that gets going, this will breed some new life. Oh, into sure. Those nice. blocks of wolf. Nice there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. absolutely. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, uh, zoning referral, PR 19 16, 484 South Salina Street. Good morning. Come on down. Okay, great. That'll be super. Could you give us your name and names <coughs> addresses for the record? Martin Jacobs, uh, 450 South Atlantic. Street. Andrew Merriam with uh, VIP Architectural Associates, uh, One Lobster's Landing. Okay. Just actually, be before we start, to, um, Andrew uh, sent me yesterday a letter from the State Preservation Office giving it a no adverse effect. Yeah, I have copies of that as well. Yeah, and I have a couple as well. So. Okay, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Okay. So this is a new build um, on what is currently a vacant lot at the end of, or where um, South Salina and West Onondaga kind of merge. Um, it's a little over an acre parking lot right now that we um, are proposing to do a four-story structure um, that is mixed use. So the first floor is a food hall. The second floor is office tenant spaces, and then the third and fourth are um, residential apartments, um, a mix between one and two bedroom. Uh, the first floor's footprint is about 24,000 square feet. Um, and I actually do have here very kind of stuff. That's where I might help as well. So you guys can see the whole floors all at the same time. Yeah, people are good. Um, but yeah, so we're proposing a new building um, on what is a vacant lot. So yeah, so I guess so the first floor, um, our goal is to be as transparent as possible. Um, so the makeup is, I believe it's 80% glass, 20% um, solid material, something along those lines. Um, the solid material that we're proposing is a, um, it's a synthetic stone. And uh, it's called, it's a Decton product and I have that as well. Um, we are proposing a dark gray uh, material um, for the building. The second, third, and fourth floor are um, just your kind of metal panels. Again, a darker color with um, a lighter gray trim panels around the building. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the project. Um, you can see the square footage. You know, we, do, we did intentionally leave a large area of the site um, under the, or more of open space, we, we created an alleyway between our building and the adjacent building um, intentionally to allow the current pedestrian thoroughfare to kind of continue, but to also kind of create some of these um, great unique outdoor spaces for dining, um, just kind of gathering, stuff like that. Um, I do have the rendering full size too, or a larger, if that helps um, to see some more. We did include a setback from our building. So our building does set back from the property line about eight, eight, eight feet. Um, off the of Salina. Off the of Salina and um, West Onondaga. Our, our, our corner point on the site is that eight feet. What we did though is we actually tapered our building along West Onondaga. Um, in an attempt to maintain, I'm sorry, 
<laughs> there, there's a group of existing trees mm -hmm. um, that the city arborist had asked us to try our best to maintain. Mm -hmm. They kind of form that gateway on that corner as you come under the bridge. Um, so we kind of tapered our building a little bit to um, fall off of West Onondaga to maintain that those root lines and that kind of um, large growth. There is a um, proposed um, kind of patio space in the future that would occupy that corner, so we're not kind of leaving it vacant, but in the future we would propose um, kind of having that to anchor that, that corner to Clinton Street um, and West Onondaga, but um, it is not part of our base project right now. Could you just go a little bit of a reintroduction or re explanation as to the exterior, the mm -hmm. materials? Yes, yeah, so we'll, we, I guess, Joe, if you want to start with the site components. Sure. Um, as of right now, we're Let's keeping. Plan, right? Yeah, sure. We'll be maintaining the existing city right of way the materials that are there. So inside a property line, majority of the pavement, pedestrian pavements will be concrete. Um, it's going to be scored like this. Yeah, scored like this. Okay. Parking lot will be asphalt. Uh, this will be sodded in lawn area. Uh, we will have some plant beds on site. Um, in the front here, we'll have a raised plant bed terrace. That'll be uh, a low grow sumac. I don't know if you're familiar with the philanthropy center in Syracuse. It's a shrubby, dense, aggressive plant that's just you know, green, turns bright red in the fall. Mm -hmm. but, What's going to be the height on that? Uh, about What's two to three height? feet, knee height. Um, along the perimeter here, along South Clinton Street, we're going to be doing a low privet hedge, which is consistent with other properties along Clinton Street there just to create uh, an informal uh, boundary, property boundary there. Internally here on the islands, we will have, the low, again, the low growth sumac, and we'll be doing a growth of uh, birch trees as well for some vertical structure. Um, we will have a, a wall here. We'll have some moss and ivy climbing up on that wall. And uh, again, some more low growth sumac and other plant beds areas. I'm sorry, where was that wall? Um, um, it's right in this building deck oh, area. Oh. Okay. Along the alleyway here, we'll be bringing in some honey locust trees in here, which is uh, similar in character with the majority of the street trees in the city. Along South Clinton Street here, we'll be picking up the London plane trees that currently exist there and continuing that character. <coughs> so, um, I think that about covers some of the site materials. Uh, site lighting, we'll be doing uh, catenary type style lighting in the alleyway, cafe style type lighting. We're doing a larger catenary type system in the parking lot with some more um, all mounted fixtures to give lighting where, where it's needed along pathways. Uh, drop off areas will have uh, a series of bollards along here and also along the path. Bollards going to be lit or not? They'll be lit, yes. Are you, are you still going with a curbless design within the parking lot? Yep. 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 So we actually have all of our, our entries, which are, so we have six primary entries. Mm -hmm. um, they are all the same elevation as us. The idea is that all of these entries are accessible and we have curbless um, to this area right here so you can go um, with free access here on our site. And you talk about the glazing, the, uh, the 80 20 is all the way around. Yeah, so um, the glazing, the yeah, so we, we had, um, we did put glazing where we have cross bracing, mm -hmm. so we naturally, the structural just yell, lead it, lend it to it, so we do have a couple of corners <coughs> that we ended up with that solid. Um, mm -hmm. Our back of house area is this area through here, and that is more or less the largest expanse of solid material, and it's just to kind of cover it. And that's things. going to be the same metal panel that you use. So that is the deck town panel, so that is that synthetic stone that's that is on the first floor. Synthetic stone. Do you have a larger sample of that or a larger picture of that? Um, Can you say again where that is, the synthetic stone? Um, so it, it kind of varies. So um, I mean, I don't see it in this room. Right there. So this area right here, this where this Salt City Market sign is, that would be one of those material areas. It's it's sporadic. It's not like a long line. It's yeah, exactly. it's, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good that's a good view of that. So this, this this one right here is actually there's a little line right there that you can kind of see. Yeah. So yeah. that would oh, be, I see. That's right there. Yeah. yeah, they're they're spread. Oh, okay. Kind of came up wherever cross bracing was needed, um, as a way to shield that. But then, um, so our synthetic stone will be the sheathing on the first floor, and the metal panels will be on the second floor. Second, second, second third, floor. second, third, yeah. fourth. Yeah, it's a large format stone panel too. So. Yeah. Um, 
What are these yeah. lines right here? So that is overhead lighting. So we are doing, um, well, how did you refer to these? Catenary lighting over our alleyway. Okay, so these are the poles. Huh? Correct. And these are in? Yep. Dan, you might want to see these. Yeah. Get Dan's comment on that. So this is a, that back of house area. Uh, so this is where we're okay. So that's the largest um, area that we would have as solid panel. Okay. The other areas are in maybe about 20 foot, 20 foot um, spacing. If you're not clear, there is a heavier line on the plan where the stone Yes, yes. A little hard to see if they're scaled. But Again, our jurisdiction here is to comment, and mm -hmm. when this was first pre presented to us, it was, uh, I think, we're all generally in support. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. the feeling I get. Right. Um, it's a uh, difficult corner to put it over. <laughs> so it's, uh, boy, if there's a more confused corner in the city of Syracuse, the edge of an <laughs> intact district, I can't find one. So, um, latitude, I think, is a little broader, a little mm -hmm. more appropriate. I, I think the adjacent party groups have grown since their last <laughs> application. <laughs> Pretty large gatherings over here now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Question? Yeah, Don, I do. I think that, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice and I think it's a great idea, but I just can't get past the materials. And I don't know if it's the color or the, the, the sharpness of it. I just don't think it fits into this particular area as well as it should. I know we had at our last meeting, we had a discussion about right. what you consider to speak to the read of maybe some of the rest of the area. Go with any kind of a quick facade. Is that in the budget or out of the budget or can't be done? Um, it's it was kind of out of the budget, um, but we also felt that this was kind of a, an appropriate solution um, in the area. Um, again, there is an identity crisis in this yeah. this area, and that's what we we, we, we try to We're present struggling. common themes. <coughs> and again, I know the bus hubs across the street. It's got a metal panel. Unfortunately, right. the hotel's got that whole stucco wall. Yeah. That's it's right. um, it is kind of a confused, as you put it, area, but. Uh, we tried to stay appropriate um, and uh, kind of do make this. Yeah, <coughs> I think I think that's the only discussion that I've heard mm -hmm. is do we try to uh, be more compatible of a read with going north on Salina, or do we admit what we just said about this corner <laughs> and uh, allow greater land to? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with the materials or the color, other than the fact that. The use of synthetic stone bothers me a great deal. Yep. And I, I would ask that that might be reconsidered a little bit. But as far as the colors, the range of dark and light and metal panels, I, I don't have a problem with that in this corner. I would agree. Personally, I would agree with that if you couldn't uh, consider. I mean, would we prefer to have the same metal panel? No, I like the idea of having something of heavier we were, we were concerned with having a metal panel down there just because of damage. Damage, damage. damage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, sure. and all the roads. All, I, we, we really wanted this, and the stone material is a very durable material. Um, and again, we were thinking a large format kind of led itself to being more of a um, kind of. You don't have a sample of that material. Uh, not with us. We, we can get one. Um, yeah, we, didn't, we don't have one out there yet. <coughs> Well, I think our comment is, and I don't want to speak for the board, so if I speak incorrectly, let me know we're in complete support. I think this is great. Um, there is some discussion about material, especially synthetic stone. And mm -hmm. uh, if you could maybe reconsider something and at least minimally get us a sample. Okay. What what would be an alternative yeah, material that you're with? Dan, what would you Some kind of reasoning, maybe? <coughs> Masonry or Mason. some kind of uh, uh, party board or street cast no. panels or something? Something that wasn't fake. <laughs> yeah. Or m maybe a little more dense material near the doors or on the corners? Something like oh, the high, like high the traffic area? I think yeah, the, yeah. the locations work pretty well. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and I like the little contrast in color. And, and Texture and other, right? If you could get us a sample, I can definitely yeah. do that. And the specs on the material, yep. and uh, <clears throat> take a look. You know, generally speaking, the synthetic materials. <clears throat> however, in this application in this building, I don't know if 
I, yeah, I understand. Much of an issue oh, I understand. I've seen I've seen a pretty broad range of what is being called synthetic stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A broad range, and some of them. I think some of them look bad, but I've seen others that I find perfectly acceptable. They, they literally look like natural stone. So if we could judge the sample... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, if you could get us as big of a sample that would, size as you That can. would be helpful. Yeah, so Frank is our construction. Is, is synthetic the right term? No, it's in a putrid. It's actually a it Manufactured? It, it actually represents stone. Manufactured. Yeah, it's like, yeah. And it's, it's stone, but manufactured. Two applications can be hung on a rain screen system. Mm-hmm. The product applies on the car. Uh, it's abuse resistant, uh, graffiti resistant, and it's basically a car to the mainstream. Yep. And what's the size of these cars? Right um, I think take, they're... Take a, large, take a large piece of slate almost and yeah. make it into a panel. What's mm-hmm. going to be the size of these panels? So the panels, I believe, are in the five foot wide and then like it, eight or nine feet tall. We are like customing it. We're, we're making the panels custom to a size. They can come in any size. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's our order. We're customizing panel. it to fit with window lines, door yeah. lines, mulling right. lines, and all. Okay, well, we're hearing a different scale than I, I think we mm-hmm. got from your suggested description. And I think we need to have some kind of sample, even yeah. if it's photographic, because it's either. I think you can get the five by nine samples up the stairs fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. So but um, I think you should be complimented on the on the next right. openness and treatment of the mm-hmm. site. I was gonna say we should took our comments to heart. Yeah, right. It's uh, it's pretty well done. I think right? this is good, but if you could get us a sample of that material as soon as possible, then we'll fit our comment and any spec sheet that goes along with okay. it. Okay. Yep. But other than that, uh, when construction start, and when do we have our first cup of coffee? As <laughs> soon as we get it all approved. Come on. <laughs> okay. What is the proposed start date? Uh, we're hoping mid-September to start really? um, excavating the site, um, pending all the approvals. Um, we do have to remediate the site. Um, right. There's you know, 60 years of rubble um, that we've got to get off this site. Um, so that'll be a couple months before the actual um, yes, any kind of construction. Thankfully, no gas stations. <laughs> Since this is uh, fast track and uh, we're at this stage, as soon as you get those materials to Kate, Kate yeah. can call a couple of yeah. us. We'll come look at it, won't we? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll jump on this as quickly as we can. Commission? Are you going to need to go to the commission? You know? Yeah, I mean, there's. Is this? No, no. There's no need to go to the planning right. commission. No. Okay, so they really are waiting on, yes. on finishing yes. up. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's an administrative us. review. That's that's all that we're going. That's, okay. Yep. Okay. Very good. We'll jump out yeah. Yeah, so there, there, there's a distributor in um, Rochester, New York, that actually um, has it. So I'll, we'll go right back to the office and get a, how big of a sample, I mean, obviously we can't get a full-size one, but. No, but you, I would think so. Three by three, so we can really see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that that could be I can get a sample here within 30 minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> before, the, before the next person goes, I can have it. Do you have it in the office? Yeah, we have a sample. How about we have this color selection, though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you probably want the color and the material. It would be faster. Yeah. 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 And I think we need some kind of, it could be a drawing that shows the scale and size of it. So I was going to ask if these axons Maybe represent the size. Yes. Yes. Those axons Those. represent the size. Yes. Yep. So we've, we've modeled the joints and everything exactly how they'll, they'll be. So um, yeah, I think that's all accurately portrayed. Yeah, I think it's accurate. Yeah, so I'm um, so the, the the description that's used in here, it's a ultra compact manufactured stone. Um, and it is made by Dekton. Um, they are the, the manufacturer. We'll get you a colored yeah. sample. Okay. Um, as big as we can get it. And we'll jump on it immediately. Okay. We don't want to hold you up anymore. Okay, thanks. This is great, guys. Thank Looks you. great. Okay, then. So this one is it's not actually even a zone referral. Um, right. Uh, I don't 
be able to We're tell just about We're, We are, yeah, and you'll see. So these small cells, or the, you will be able to describe what's going on. Well, I'll let you do your introduction. <laughs> Perfect. This is. Where was I just listening to it? Hear it from everywhere. <laughs> I'm just kind of blowing face. All right. Um, thanks for having us come in today. Oh, no worries. Okay. Just for the record, give your name. Yep. Oh, uh, Greg Hanley from Verizon Wireless. Uh, I'm located at 132 Creek Circle in East Syracuse, New York. Uh, Robert Wilson, I'm a real estate contractor for Verizon. I uh, work for Pyramid Network Services. We're at 6615 Fifth Avenue, Syracuse. Chris Boyce, real estate contractor for Verizon. Work for Pyramid Network Services. Six six one. Same address. Six Sorry. six one. Okay. I just put down Great. Pyramid Boyce. So there we go. So this is our first time yep. um, before your board. These uh, four sites that uh, we're going to have you guys look at today are part of our initial uh, 5G deployment in the city of Syracuse. Um, our process that we Put in place with the city. Uh, we have a master license agreement for the deployment of small wireless facilities um, in the city. It's not a carte blanche approval. Uh, we still have to go through the permitting department um, with our with our application. Um, we've worked with Jake Deshaw. He's set up a an application process. Um, all of our sites are reviewed by the police, the engineering department, the water department, the DPW. Mm -hmm and then uh, permitting as well. Um, and then I believe Mary, the city engineer, she's the one that gives the final approval. Um, but part of, uh, part of that process is if we are located or propose to locate something uh, in a historic district, um, we need to seek uh, your approval as well. So I don't know in the end if you guys provide some sort of an approval letter or not, but we would include well, that we'll with comment. our we'll comment. Our, our jurisdiction is to comment. Yeah. And, uh, in terms of the powers to be within the city, right. uh, we all have uh, influence. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Chris and, Chris and um, Mr. Birch have uh, the four sites. Um, they've done the real estate and <coughs> stuff. They've worked with members on our team to, to kind of nail down these locations. Um, some of these locations, we've actually evaluated multiple uh, poles in the area. Um, I believe four of these are on what we would call a traffic signal pole, and one of them is going to be on like a traditional wooden uh, national grid uh, utility type um, pole. Um, overall, uh, our deployment in the city of Syracuse, the majority of the sites uh, are on the wooden style um, poles. Uh, I did work with Rebecca Klausner uh, from City Planning with the Aesthetic Guidelines. Um, we have tried to follow them as best as we possibly could. Um, I'm trying to set up a meeting with Rebecca for the first week of September to kind of go over some of these uh, conceptual designs and get her feedback. Um, and then obviously, you know, this is our first trip in front of you guys. So we're trying to figure out what the, you know, how the whole process goes. But um, you've got the right people here to answer any questions um, that you guys have. If you have, you know, concerns, comments, uh, we can certainly, you know, talk about each site individually. Um, what you'll probably notice um, over the course of this material is they all pretty much look the same. Um, we're trying to get a template, you know, for if we go on a traffic signal pole, what's it going to look mm -hmm. like? You have a better picture of the actual unit. You have some sketches, but not a picture. Yeah. We don't have any photos in the yeah. at this time. We just have the exhibit <coughs> as is. Uh, right, right, right. And the detail right. of. Yeah. For today, that's what we have um, yeah. with the current design that we have. That, that's one thing we would like to see. Just okay, the actually, photo, yeah. Sure. We've got. Um, I mean, I've got one in Rochester in our office. Um, we can, you know, put it on a table, take a picture of it, something like that. Is that yep. okay? Yeah, and I also some, have an engineering. Yeah, yeah, I can stand next to it and have sort of yeah. hold it in my hand, something like if that. If you had an example, some pole that you've already put one up on, yeah, that you could show us. So, unfortunately, Syracuse will be the first city in, in New York State. Oh, this is virgin yeah. territory. Yeah. yeah, so we have the first. We haven't deployed any of them. We have okay. one unit in our office, which is a. You know, it, it, it's 
the exact unit. It just doesn't mm -hmm. have the guts, the electronics in it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I can get a picture. And we do have the engineering spec sheets um, as well. Yeah, because you just have there. listed a minimal clearance, but the right. size of the actual unit. Right, yeah. Like right. a three-foot unit, two, like... Yeah, what in, we, in, what is this? yeah. In, in general, the, the 5G the there? radials yeah. that are at the top of the poles, they're roughly... 18 inches to 19 inches tall. They're about 12 inches wide and 8 inches deep. That's the rough size of them. Just in terms of, of their, they, it looks as though they, they pop what about a couple couple feet above yep. the, the top of the existing poles. Yes. Um, well, what does the star mean? How does that relate to anything? Yeah. So is that the location? The star that's the location. Just the location. Oh, it's just the location. Just the yeah. 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 reference to this. Okay. A reference. It's a PowerPoint. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to make it look like a blue star. <laughs> that's not the scale, so. Are any of them, okay, are any of them mounted on streetlights? Streetlights yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, yep. traffic control signals. Yep. And power. Yeah. And power. Yeah. And power. Yeah. And power. The decorative streetlights in the city? No. no. We will not be deploying on any of the decorative streetlights in the city. And, does, and that includes in the residential? No, will they be go, they'll be going into residential neighborhoods. Yes. Right? Yeah, but usually in the residential areas, it's all wooden poles, um, mm -hmm. and, that's what, and that's what we'll be going with. With the exception of some of the special lighting districts. Right. Yeah. So they, they will not get to be that going well, yeah. One question I do have, and Kate, maybe you can answer this. Yeah. I know this is part of a larger project that might include more cameras might include um, uh, sensors for lighting that mm -hmm. the mayor talked mm -hmm. about. I mean, where is all this going? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like endless opportunity on these things. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, personally, I think this is the greatest thing there at Syracuse, but that's me. Um, <laughs> I am concerned, however, that by the time they add uh, additional devices um, in some locations, that's going to be problematic. Visually clogging. So I, I can. I'll. I'll. I'll find out from Rebecca. And she's okay. uh, to be able to, to give us some sense. I know at the moment they are in the process of, of replacing all the street lights. All the street lights. Right. Um, right. So that's. I mean, that's a bit different than this. Um, but some of those sensors and so forth will be actually you know, incorporated into you know, poles. And right. So, so this. These. Uh, antennae, yeah, antenna slash radios would be possibly replaced as new technology comes out, or be added onto. I, I, don't, I don't see this pole mounted item with sixteen attachments to it. Right, right. right. In my mind, I think something would be replaced or upgraded as as few. Right, you just nailed it right, right. on the head. Right. Um, everything in our technology, everything that we've it's done, shrinking. gets smaller and smaller and smaller. These five G small cells are a quarter of the size of the 4G small cells uh, mm -hmm. that we've been putting on poles for years. Um, mm -hmm. And then they're a tenth of the size of a macro cell site uh, that we put but on rooftops you're not going to be putting them on deck of a street light. No. Mm -hmm. So are those neighbors going to be covered or not? Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the, um, in the city's aesthetic guidelines, the decorative poles are at the bottom of the list. And we're plain and simple not going to touch those poles. Um, what we talked about with Rebecca, uh, we talked about with, uh, with the permitting folks is if we do need to go in an area where it is decorative lights, we'll put a new pole in between two existing decorative lights that'll match that light pole as close as possible in aesthetics with our, with our equipment concealed inside. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, you know. That's gonna yeah. Not going over big. Well, yeah. That's not gonna go over big. Work. What you might wanna do, I think you're gonna find in almost all of the decorative neighborhoods, right. the Niagara Mohawk lines are in the back. backyards. Oh, in the and, backyards. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're gonna yeah. have wooden poles there. Yep. And that's that would good. be. Okay. So had, they just go down the back. Yeah, yeah we've back dealt with that there. in in the Rochester right. area. Yeah. It it really makes things a lot more difficult. Like if we have to get back there to do something, then you got to get you know an easement through somebody's side yard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you know, in the end, if we have to do it, we have to do it, and that's and that's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it's, I mean, well, those, eas those easements exist right now for the yeah. power company. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So right. you just yeah. use, we use the same easement. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, that's a the that's one negative. Absolutely feasible. Everything in the back area, there'd be more tree cover. Right. Yeah. 
and, and it really, and that, what I stated about putting in a new pole, when we discussed that, it was kind of more for like the downtown areas. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there are some streets where you had nothing but a line of the, um, you know, the green, the beautiful right. decorative yeah. poles. Yeah. Um, right, exactly. And then, you know, for those areas, it's, you know, you target the intersections where the traffic signal poles right. are, if we can, right. you know. Tom? Right. Well, I, my initial reaction is that these antenna these are antennas right mm-hmm. yes yeah. uh, are not going on anything historic they're going on something else yeah. and uh, and if if I remember my own reaction things like this go almost unnoticed literally they're on the top of a pole so they, but they go the unnoticed scale, the but scale. the scale and that so that's what I guess that's why we would like to see yeah. uh, it I think it's great that you are able more and more to miniaturize some of these things so the smaller it is I think the better our reaction is going to be what, what but in terms of these four locations from the board's <coughs> point of view and taking Tom's comment does anybody see any I mean we want to see it I have a stupid question because I'm stupid what no, do these not. red lines mean those are an outline of the historic districts um, I, I don't know which Ooh. I just pulled that. On the mapping? So they don't really have any relationship to what you're... No. No, I'm... Essentially, if you look at even like this example, here's our candidate, here's our structure candidate, and it's directly in front of your Montgomery Street from the sort of historic district. That's... We just want to show the proximity of where it is. Okay. The boxes themselves are... So those are the historic districts. So... Yeah. So showing the area concern. No, what I was thinking is in terms of this... When I said scale, I meant the... The overall scale of downtown is much different than in our residential neighborhoods. So I think the fact that I I think you're right, Tom, that people will not notice them because you have big, towering buildings. um, And uh, yeah, but out in the uh, yeah in the residential residential neighborhoods, then it it becomes a little bit. uh, And if you look at, I I can't remember which one. So we we have one that's mounted to a pole on Brighton or on Collin. There's one that's a wood pole. Yeah, that would be. And again, we're trying to get a template so everything looks the same on a Mm -hmm. wood pole. That's what we're targeting right now for the design. Literally, I think, like you Good. said, okay, it's it's probably the bottom of that radio is probably two and a half feet above the top of the wooden pole, and then that radio is only, like I said, eighteen to twenty inches tall. So you're looking at roughly three huh. and a half feet above what the height of the existing pole is right now. And they're all they're a white or a gray. They are they are like a dark gray color. Um, when we met with Rebecca, uh, when I met with Rebecca, we talked specifically about it's an wooden building. poles that we would do everything OEM colors. So originally for the manufacturer, which is that, that gray. Mm-hmm. Um, anything on any like traffic signal poles, if the pole's green, yep. we're going to paint everything to match the color know, of that okay, pole. You can paint them. Yeah, so it'll be, we can't paint the face part of right. the antenna, right. but the whole rest of the radio can be housing. painted, the conduit can be painted, um, any of the stuff you know going on the side of the poles can all be painted to match the poles. On the wooden poles, we figured that that standard gray yeah. is probably a fit. Most brand new poles, they're kind of brown, um, but after they fade out after five years, they start to get gray. Yes, yeah, no, they kind of match. No, I have it in my mind. Can I ask a question? So this, oh, yeah, yeah. we still got a question. Okay, sorry. Is this particular um, review and comment only for what you're proposing now? And mm-hmm. when you get into the Correct. actual neighborhoods, that'll be a different conversation mm-hmm. with us. Correct. If yeah, if, if we're to a historic neighborhood. Yeah, if we're in a historic neighborhood, okay. yeah. So okay. these are just we kind of did this um, something similar with the the planning group, um, the engineering group, the permitting group, the traffic group, the DPW group mm-hmm. on okay. Tuesday. We did an intake meeting for our first five applications, got everybody at the table and just kind of went over the whole process. So this was kind of our thing here is let's get you five examples. We can come in, mm-hmm. get your feedback, um, you know, and see how see how we need to develop things um, going forward. I mean, and again, if, if like you guys said, you know, if everything's good, then we can run with these these designs um, right now. You know yeah, what I mean? I think, I think we just want to see the unit. Yeah. That's I like how it's malleable. Kind of with all that, that's how, how much conduit's going to be necessary? I mean, you know, if you got a <coughs> unit here, well, you got a 
a meter. Going to be coming from where? Yeah, so on those poles, a um, meter. You're going to have the radio at the top, right? You're going to have a, uh, a meter, um, like you said, and that's probably going to be about 10 to 12 feet off the ground, and then you're going to have fiber as well. But usually, what happens is that comes off from the the pole, the lines that are coming to the pole. So okay. we actually have to run a conduit down the pole for the, the fiber the on the outside for the fiber and the power so it goes to its meter and a, and a telco box and then back up uh, to the radio but I think um, and you can see that if you look at the, the wooden pole you can see there's two there's two different conduits yeah. um, on that pole one for one for power one for fiber because we do separate them um, but again, and that's all painted to match. Yes, it'll all be painted um, to match. Schedule forty, or is it a yep. steel? Yep, it'll be. It'll be yep. usually schedule. yeah, schedule, schedule forty. Yeah, yeah. Schedule forty. Will it be painted to match? Uh, the six, 60 inches to the bottom of the meter. Sixty inches. Five feet. And everything would be painted to match the pole. Yes. Unless it's on a wooden pole, you it's going to be it. a dark red. Yeah, it's just going to be that standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the actual height. So, what I've seen, yeah, what I've seen in the ones that we just submitted, um, the, the lowest point of, of the bottom of the equipment is a minimum of eight feet off the ground. So that way people can't, yeah. you know, yeah. reach up and monkey around with yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Typically, on the 4G sites, the um, the meter and the telco <coughs> box is the lowest, and then the radio equipment is, you know, a couple feet above that. So. Yeah. Well, I think the comment of the board is, you know, subject to seeing it with what you've done here in these five locations. I think we're all okay with it. I am. Yeah, it sounds like we're... Sounds, sounds good to me. What I will do I is I will point. try to um, email Kate, maybe even today, okay. uh, a picture of somebody in Rochester holding that radio. Okay. Yeah, give no, it some sort, of a, yeah. some sort of a scale. Yeah, and just give the dimensions. Yeah, and I'll get a spec sheet height. for it, too. All right, yeah, great. An engineering yeah, spec sheet. Yeah. If anybody has any comment on it when you get it from Kate, get back to Kate. Right. Reply right. right. Reply right. Yeah. Reply right, right. away. Yeah. Do you guys want us to come back at your next meeting, or? I don't think there's any reason. I don't think there's any need. Just we'll uh, as Lisa comment. said, as you go forward and get into the yeah. historic neighborhoods, especially. Yep. Um, you know. That's going to take a different. That's going to take a different yeah. So what we'll do is. But look um, at Nymo's deliveries in the back. Yes. Yes. We yes. we definitely will. Put up we a definitely new will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Never say no. <laughs> no, this is true. So yeah, we'll I'll I'll, I'll communicate with Kate okay, on great. you know the process for future you know future sites. These are like I said the first five. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I don't know. You guys will send me something. Are you going to report up to? Yeah, well, I'll probably get to Jake or okay. whoever. Jake is the one who's coordinating. The yeah, board. yeah. So he, I'll, I'll let him know. He hasn't. We haven't submitted any 5G apps yet, um, so these haven't been submitted to him. Um, again, we're kind of coming to you guys because we want to figure out what the process is. So, so I can. I'll let Jake know that that we've had the conversation. Okay. So what that will mean is that when those right. permits come through, that I'll be able to sign off on. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, and that's a, I think that's probably a good point. He's I can't remember the, the system name that he was talking about on Tuesday, but I, basically, yes, yes I, that's yeah. it. And he said everybody will because the five sites that we sent, Bob uploaded all the information, and then he said everybody gets it all at once, and everybody yeah. can review their See stuff. It. So if it triggers a historic district, then you know you'll yeah. get it. And, You're in, yep. and and again, based on right. seeing the that photograph, yeah. will we'll be so able once to the whole city. Would be so we're we're Christmas. rushing right now to get as much of this, you know, setting up this process, setting up the permitting process, so we can really start putting these permits in. We we wanted to try to have you know some of the nodes on the air this year, but I think in in reality right. in 2020 is when you're going to see our first real build. We're going to try to do probably over 100 sites next year in 2020. Wow. Um, I think the grand total, I told the Common Council three or four months ago, was probably around 600 nodes right. in the city. And, you know, for us, it, it depends what headquarters tells us. Mm -hmm. um, they might say, you know, 
we, we plan to do 150 next year, they could come to us in October and say, hey, can you do 300? You know, because we have a, we have a good relationship with Syracuse. It's it's really a partnership, right? And if they're running into some other cities around the country that they wanted to deploy in, and they're starting to have a hard time, but they know they have a good relationship with Syracuse, we have a great process put in place. They'll give us their money, so we can you know try to get Syracuse done faster uh, rather than stretching it out over four or five years. Yeah, so, what's the coverage per unit? Good question. <laughs> um, on the 5G radios, you're talking probably 500 feet away from the site. So what we've told, yeah, what we've told everybody is about every thousand feet you would have a node. Um, our planning group tells us that per square mile, you're going to probably average around 20 nodes yeah. per square mile. Does that affect yeah. more density? Just thinking about yeah, the frequency and the density. In the neighborhoods. Something like a Cedric, which is wider as well as longer, you're going to have installations within the district. Oh, absolutely. You talk to absolutely. a place like Scott Home, you might not. You, you got might the back side of Westmore right. and the back side yeah. of Meadowbrook. You might Scott not have any. you got full coverage up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, you might not have any in, in the district at all. Right. That's yeah, true. The, the coverage footprint is really dependent. The, the frequency that we're using is. The, the main thing, you know, the lower the frequency, the further it covers, and unfortunately, fortunately, uh, on, on the 5G, we're using a very high frequency, uh, so that limits it, and then the other part is what we call clutter, so trees, buildings, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature are considered clutter, but as the signal passes <laughs> through that clutter, it weakens it, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, you may want, as you're looking and tracking your historic districts, you may want to look at the back sides and sides yes. of the districts, and you might not even have to go in them. Exactly. We will definitely take that note and investigate that for sure. All right. All right. I will get you guys that picture hopefully today. Okay. And That'd be great. Uh, we'll be in contact. Thanks so much. Right. Thanks, folks. Thank Appreciate Thank you. your time. Okay. okay. Uh, discussion phase uh, 339, 43, 345 West Jefferson. Unless you want to finish off with that. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So we work quick around here, you know. We got it done. It's all for you, Mark. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know Rochester was so close. <laughs> uh, so it's not your three by three. So right. um, this is, is the that a drone delivery manufacturer. Um, but this is not the, the, the color or anything, but it's to kind of show what the material looks like. So it is going to be the same size thickness. Our panels are again probably five feet by eight. That's a thinner panel. Though. Correct. Correct. So it's not. Good. It's not. It's that color. This, this color. Color, that color. That color. That's size. That's the same in between these two panels. The thickness of bread. Yeah. So it's like a, a third it's thickness. It's like a five eighths or something, or eight. three eighths. Okay. But this, this is the color. That, that, yeah, that is the color. So that's why I want to make sure you saw that. Yeah, so it is in the brochure. It is a manufactured stone. So it's taking the dust and all that, and they make this kind of taking three inches of dust and compressing it into. No, so going to have the gradation is going to be a solid, it's solid, 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 panel. solid, solid the whole way. Yeah. So is there any that. texture? Um, just it's what this just, just that. It's just a little yeah, bit. Of, say, like, don't get yeah, don't, sidetracked by the. Yeah, we'll put it over. <laughs> 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 it's really that to be looking at in terms of what the dust is. But the idea that it is a very durable um, yeah. product, again, it's... Yeah, it's a, right. product know. of Spain, I've seen that. Yeah, okay. So, you said application via rain screen so this or gets, yeah, applied so they, There's the a building. bracket behind here, so these are all concealed um, fasteners, so it gets... There's a bracket that gets put on here, and then it gets hung up on the wall. Um, or it can be direct applied like you would a, a tile. Um, right. On Here's our foundation side. walls, we will be directly applied. Our walls above the foundation. So joints. we have joints. There right. will be joints, but it's a rain screen system. They're not grouted. They no, are, no, not grouted. But I think they're. I think they're. They're minimal. They're not. It's not a wide it's joint. A tight joint. Tight joint. <clears throat> I, I don't. I think it's just enough to kind of allow flexibility. I. I, I don't believe it's a large issue. There's no expansion contraction. It's enough to kind of cover any kind of movement. Why does that sound metallic when you tap it? Is that your fingernails? Um, I don't know. It does, kind of. Interesting. What's that? It's thicker. Oh, it's It could be interesting in a hailstorm. It gives you a concert outside. Yeah. Um, so I'm just thinking if someone, if a 
if something hard were to hit it and it would break. Mm -hmm. If you had it directly applied, you'd have obviously more density to keep that from right. fracturing. So if it's a ring screen, you'd be able to take that off you and replace it. You would take the panel it. off and replace the panel. Yeah. Well, it's a pleasure of the board. Do we want to see anything else? Or is this, I mean, that's what we asked for. So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm okay. Yeah, I don't too. Can you still get the, the color? Lisa, what do you think about this? Just so dark. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan, but that's just my <laughs> opinion. What's your, what's your comment on it? What do you... I, I just... I just feel that the materials and the colors are not in keeping with that particular. Right. Just, yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So, from a majority point of view, our comment is uh, you positive and go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. First work put on this install, sixty dollars square foot. Install. Install. This one was cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you guys coming. Thank back. you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, full schedule today, Don. Well, it's because it's, it's the well, July and August. Yeah, meetings, it's, right? the, it's the catch up. Okay, could you give us your name and uh, address for the records? Sure. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm Anna Sherlock, 439 Cassie Drive, Syracuse. I'm Jim Sherlock. Okay, floor is yours. Welcome. Well, or I can I can explain. I'll give an overview. So explain a little bit what's Why going on. Please. Yeah, I can. Okay, so you may recall back in the <laughs> midst of time, 2013, I think it was that. Was it 2013? Anyway, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, that there was a proposal to. Uh, or there was a potential for a demolition project. There were three buildings at the time here on West Jefferson Street. Um, and they backed up onto the, what is the pharmacy? Sterifarma that was, I believe, thinking about expanding. Mm -hmm. So the thought was, we'll purchase these properties and we'll knock them down and expand our business. Um, so, so in anticipation of that, uh, the, the board had Crawford and Stearns uh, develop this report on the three buildings um, and uh, to determine whether or not the building should move forward for local designation. And that's all because of the, the demo, remembering that the, a demo permit would trigger that review. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of trying to get a jump on it. Right. Um, well, that the proposal never went through. Um, and the uh, and so we never got a demo permit, and it never went any further than this report. Um, since 2013, the probably the largest and maybe the best of the three buildings, I'm not sure. And the wall collapsed, and there was an emergency demolition. Right. Um, that would be the one on the 345. The, 345, the adjacent to so, King Kings Park. Yeah. Right. Um, and. Um, so the furthest west of those three buildings. Correct. And uh, so now we, we have two buildings. And you you own the properties, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and again, the question is coming up about selling the property. And really, although there isn't in particular a, a buyer at this point, if that's correct, it's just no, you would like to get some clarity about yeah, we, which we, direction. We have been in discussion with King King Architects and Scary Pharma. Uh, okay. This keeps coming up. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have not listed it, but we—that's you know, that's, we want to jump on this right now. So. Right. Yeah. So really, the question is, um, and I don't know if the board can sort of answer this today, um, but to again sort of review the information that we have here, understanding that one of those buildings is now gone, mm -hmm. and uh, actually one of them is pretty has been altered fairly significantly. Um, and, and so we have one sort of fairly intact um, uh, building of, of those original three. And um, I don't know if it would be, uh, I mean, we can discuss it now, but also going, uh, maybe taking a look as well, uh, going on into the I don't know, Jeff, have you been around to see what? Uh, well, um, in 2013, I went over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I just walked around the outside, walked around the street. Um, 
did it to develop a feel for what's going on over there. Um, and I, I probably still have the pictures on my phone. But um, just thinking in totality, you know, we've lost one of the buildings. Um, it's kind of an orphaned block. Here. We're completely separated off from Armory, from the railroad uh, overpass and uh, viaduct, whatever you want to call it. So, personally, they're nice buildings, and I've read the report to see how they could be reused or maintained, but um, it's just, I think, personally, I think it is, they're too far gone, and there's, they're too alienated. And an orphan. Yeah. yeah. I think orphan's the best yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, it, just kind of sitting out it, there. So, um, I appreciate all the research that was done. They did a nice job putting together the photos. Yeah, you got you guys got a copy of the photos. Are kind of mind blowing when you see all the activity, and all the all the density around it, and then you look at it today, and it's just like. Ugh. I actually have the photos from 2013. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's what and, mm -hmm. well, yeah, we, no, these are the ones I probably sent. Well, there's, uh, the, there's the, the, ones, old, the, the old the ones in the pack. Just there's the old historic yeah. photos in here right. too. The individual showing the street. Purchase. What is the intention? You see, they're not short. I, again, uh, Sturry Pharma. Uh, I know they are yeah, building know, out love, of the other direction. Uh, there's an expansion. Yeah. So that, that's early discussions yes. with them. Uh, I brought them through, and then I also brought uh, Kirk uh, from King King through. Yeah. And um, they, they're not sure. The only one that, that could be, um, they would do anything with is the one on the end. The one in the middle, 343, is, is too far gone. Right. But I mean, the intention do you think is to build or to parking lot? Or? Honestly, I, I couldn't even answer that. I know, I know. But they're not eligible or listed. And we looked, not, we uh, looked at doing it as a three pack. As a th I think that was the original intention was right. if, if they were going to be designated, it would be <clears throat> as sort of almost a little mini district. But well, yeah, the intention yeah. was that we could connect Armory right. and Jefferson across the railroad mm -hmm. to this. Now we have two out of the three, and then now out of the two, we have one that's severely deteriorated, right. Right. which we have one left. And so then, and the one plausibility left. of So that are we expansion. looking to make a formal statement today? I, I think that um, if... As to it, whether or not we would pursue local... Yeah, if, if the question is, is if a demo permit came in, right. would the board pursue a local protected site application or do we actually have enough information at this point mm -hmm. to say probably not. Any other comments from any other board members? I mean, I, is there a desire to consider pursuing local designated <coughs> status on this? I don't see a reason for it. Yeah, I, I'd say no. So our comment, the majority of the board, is that uh, at this point we would not pursue Okay. Wish the best for it, but yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we would you encourage you to encourage you. 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 Uh, the, the, yeah, well, the, the interest was actually in right. the collection. Right? Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Now we've got a situation where yep. that has been lost. So, right. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah thank you for being considerate. We find that interesting to say. <laughs> <laughs> you learn a lot. Yeah, thank you. So much you know. All right. Anything else? With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. thank you, Second. In favor? Hi. Uh, have a great Labor Day. We'll see you. <laughs> well, I will in not September. Be here on the you're fifth. not going to be here on the fifth. <laughs>